lookbook sewing project behind the scenes and in this episode I'm going to be doing some searching or overlocking and testing the seam that's coming up. Okay I'm at my overlocker and um, I tend to test on scrap fabric so I've got some scraps of the fabric here and because I haven't made this kind of coat for such a long time I'm testing the overlock stitch to make sure that it's not going to warp the fabric whatsoever because I want it to be as stable as possible and also to make sure that because this fabric frays a lot um, I don't want to be having any loose threads when I construct the coat so I'm going to be overlocking every part of the coat yeah I will be and also I may not do the curve on the sleeve I'll just see how that goes I won't do it if I need to as I am constructing the sleeve I may do it then but um, at the moment I'm not going to be doing that but yeah so yeah I'm happy with the stitching of my overlock and um, this is a sample for the seam so like I said before in a previous video that I was doing a flat bell seam so um, I've been testing that out and that looks super cool so it just needs pressing so what I what I did is just Based it down in position so that will be hand sewn <laughs> so and that's going to be the other side so you can't you just see a seam and even on the this side where it's mostly black you're not going to see that much of thread as well apart from when it comes into the areas here where it's a uh, you know you've got a bit of the cream color the swirl design in the fabric but um, yeah, and you can probably see a little bit there, but all up there, no, you can't see it. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, and I'm quite happy with the results. So I've tested the seam and I'm happy with that. That's obviously going to need some pressing and it's quite a bulky fabric. If I can just show you there, yeah. On there. And um, as I said, I'm also happy with the overlock stitch. So those are the two things I've tested. And I am just going to overlock or surge. What, you know, in England we say overlock. <laughs> so I'm just going to overlock my pieces. And I am... I'm going to start on this side. So this is how I kind of go about the process of me sewing. So I like to do all my things in stages. Um, so after I've done the overlocking and I'm happy with the testing of the seam, then I'll probably go on to do another part of the garment or this is the stage in which I will stop if I know I've got something else to do. So, um, yeah, that's gone. Helps it put the switch on, doesn't it? So I'm just going to slowly go around. And I tend not to cut my fabric pieces with the blade. Technically, when you're overlocking, you should really be only cutting off the loose threads that are just in the way and you want that to be a neat finish. So, and I've literally only just cut this out so it's also very important that you keep your fabric quite stable when you're cutting it out, especially if it's a fabric that, overlaps, that, um, that unravels quite quickly. 
I'm just gonna go all the way around. I'll just show you. Because I know I'm going to be over blocking all the way around, I don't usually like little slits, you know, for the indication of notches. So I've just done tailor tacks for my balance marks here for the sleeve. So this is the armhole. And I've just done a tailor's tack so that when I come to put in the sleeve, I can match up the tailor tack in the sleeve and also on the coat. And I've also done a couple there. So this section here is where the dart was, um, or technically still is. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be easing that into the side seam of the back of the, of the coat because I don't want any darts on this. The only dart that's going to be on this garment is going to be in the sleeve because I want it to have that kind of st strong, structured, tailored look to the, to the sleeve. I finished all my overlocking or surging. So is all of that here. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Oh, um, let me just, I'm going to put links in the description to um, techniques that you may want to use. So for example, the flat fell seam, I'll put links to all the techniques that I've used in my coat. Um, the one that I've used in this episode is obviously going to be the overlocking. So if you've never done any overlocking or searching before, then I'll put links to video tutorials that I've done on that. So, um, and another tip for overlocking into corners, which I hope you can see there. So I'll put a video link in order to help you so that you get a neat finish when it comes to the inner corners when you're searching. So I'll put links to that in the description as well. So overlocking, flat fell seam. Oh, let me just say, with the flat fell seam video tutorial link that I'm putting in the description, it is a machine link, a machine sewn seam from start to finish. But the one that I'm using in this um, coat, it's a little bit different. It's going to be the slow method of doing a flat fell seam, which I'll do in another episode of this series. So if you want to see me how I do that, uh, I won't necessarily do a technique, I'll just show you what I did and then it's up to you whether you want to do the slow method to, I don't really think that many people have done techniques on the slow method of doing a flat fell seam. Um, that may be something I've just made up. <laughs> um, and that is just involving um, hand sewing, so I will definitely show you how I go about doing that. And it's going to be working with this coat as well because it's a reversible coat. And I showed you the little example earlier of me testing that. And yeah, it's going to it's gonna work. I'm looking forward to see how it looks like on this coat. So um, yeah, so the next stage will be to put this coat together. And um, I will be showing you how, I'm just hoping that the collar will work it will stand by itself. If it doesn't and it needs help, then I'll show you um, how I'm going to make sure that it does stay stood up because there's no facing to this and there's no interfacing in order to help stabilize it. So I've got to think of another method to make sure that it doesn't collapse on itself once it's been worn. So yeah, that is going to be that for this video for this episode, I've got to get used to saying episodes now. Um, so if you're interested in me doing more episodes, then please put that in the comment box below. And if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and do stick around on the channel for more awesome fashion sewing tutorials. And I will see you next time.